Hello and good morning. So wanted to <laughs> do something odd today. Um, so I've mentioned this game a few times. Um, basically, there's a, there's one uh, one civilization game that it, it's just always kind of uh, boggled the mind. To be completely honest, now I've played almost all the uh, all the series here. I'm not super familiar with a lot of the you know weird meta stuff. I usually just uh, do the whole SimCity type of situation. Where you just sort of go in and then wind up in a 400-year-long war with the Car Carthaginians over, like, a missing settler or something. But anyway, um, so yeah, personally, of all of them, like, Civ 2 is probably my favorite, but, uh, but yeah. Um, while I'm fami familiar with a lot of the series, there's one that was just really strange. So when I picked up my Vita, um, I was excited to try this one out, because uh, Civ Revolutions 1 on the DS while being very simplistic in terms of graphics, was a pretty solid game. So, to kind of explain this here, and you may notice, um, hey, there's no music, what's up with that? Yeah, that's because they didn't even remember to include music in this game. Um, but, uh, in terms of uh, the overall idea, the, the Revolutions games were supposed to be like... Uh, well, they were supposed to simplify things. They were supposed to make them, like, take the long Civ game experience and boil them down to like an hour or two. And so that's what happened here. Um, now, Civ Revolutions 1, for the most part, did that. The AI was pretty alright, there was a lot of boiling down of different mechanics, it worked pretty darn well for the most part. Um, but, uh, but yeah, uh, this one actually was originally built as mostly multiplayer only, from what I can understand. And again, it's a little funny that they have that thing on, on the left, uh, with the little music thing. Because this slight hum in the main menu is the closest that we get to music for pretty much the entire game. Uh, there's no unique civilization tracks or anything else that you'd expect from the series. But okay. Uh, we might as well start explaining what they actually did here. So, we're just going to do a random map. Um, if you're wondering why tutorial's blinking, it's... Well, I've mentioned this a few times, but my, uh, my Vita's chip corrupted itself a while ago. Um, I think it's been... All has it really been almost a year already? It, it might have been over uh, over a year already. Um, but yeah, I just have actually haven't played this since then. Uh, but yeah, pretty much all saved data from everything got removed. Um, so I should probably explain what this thing has to start off with. Uh, for one thing, it actually came with a bunch of extra scenarios. Well, there are three of them. It's supposed to be like, hey, you know, here's this free DLC. These suck. That That's about it. They, they just suck. Um, to explain how this works, uh, this is just a navy fight that keeps on going forever and you usually get slightly outmatched and then you eventually take one city and then you win. Um, this one, you basically just invade a couple towns and that's it. And then this one, it's you get like five units and then you try to take over an island. It's nothing great. I, I really don't even know why they bothered. But anyway, so let's go ahead and start a new game. So we'll do uh, just any old random map on uh, Deity, just to uh, <laughs> just to show that the uh, the bugs in this are pretty much ever present. Now it has a bunch of hidden characters and stuff like that um, that you get for certain achievements. Um, uh, which be best way to describe it is usually like you do something stereotypically associated with uh, with that to particular faction. Like for the for Kennedy, I think you have to. Um, I think it's like you have to win with both the Statue of Liberty and Hollywood uh, as uh, as uh, uh, Lincoln, stuff like that. Um, some of them, like like Lennon here, are kind of just completely busted, um, just because they like this one. Despite this game being a primarily multiplayer game, it never actually got multiplayer. It's a great choice. <laughs> so for a little background, both of this and. Uh, and XCOM Vita were, well, they're both buggy as all hell, but it seems like they were kind of just punted out the door, and that was about it. Um, here, let's see if, you know, if we turn this up, let's see if the music is maybe somewhat audible. There we go. Just so we can get the very few bits of music that we can actually hear. Now, uh, as far as bonuses go, all of their, uh, all of their stuff is basically going to follow the same format. Uh, so they give you your starting bonus at the bottom. Um, they give you your four bonuses for each of the four, uh, uh, four uh, uh, ages, and then what you've won at before. Um, I'm going to go with uh, with this one here. This lady's generally been my favorite in this game, just because uh, part way through the game you can just spam infinite units. It's uh, it's definitely definitely balanced. 
Now, um, okay. So, in most civilization games, you know, you had your all your different uh, tech trees and different uh, different stuff at the very start. This one boils down to just uh, production, science, and money as far as your resources go. Um, it, it's got bonus resources, but all of them are going to boil into those. Well, I suppose, and culture as well, huh? Um, if you may notice that the camera is going around all over the place, that's because for some reason the sensitivity is ridiculously high. Um, so with the Vitas and their kind of weird tendency to have drifting sticks, it becomes especially annoying. Because, uh, yeah, it just kind of occasionally throws your camera all over the place. So we're just going to start these off here. Um, it automatically skips your first several turns. Um, it, you may notice that the game will just randomly skip time for you because it thinks that's what you want it to do. I really wish it wouldn't do that, but, you know, so it is. So, okay, we start off with our first guy. I guess we'll go ahead and have them explore. Uh, funny little note, by the way, you may notice these little camps over here. The AI does not know how to interact with those. So, for example, if I were to leave this barbarian camp here, we would never get invaded from up here. You may have also noticed, hey, there were no map options. What kind of other maps can you make? You can't. This is the only map. <laughs> this is the only chance. Or this is the only type of, uh, of thing that you get here. So there's one. So yeah, that slight little hum from the barbarians. Congratulations. That's, that's all the soundtrack we're getting. Um, as far as how combat works in this one, it's basically just a roll of dice against each other. So whatever their number happens to be, um, they will, uh, well, they'll basically throw those against each other. You may have noticed that the one uh, took a few losses to a zero. Uh, this is because of decimal stuff, I guess, and also due to, uh, well, due to the fact that it, there's some RNG in how the numbers actually work. It's supposed to be that every... I think it's like if you have seven times the bonus, uh, you can't lose. That's actually not true. Sometimes you can actually have no reason to lose a fight and lose anyway. Um, because the numbers are just bugged sometimes. Alright, let's see. Yeah, we already have two barbarians here, so we might as well go for B2 barbarians. Yeah, they give you a, a little thing at the very start. Uh, essentially allowing you to cheat, uh, telling you, hey, if you beat, if you uh, do this little mini challenge, we'll just give you a free unit, a bonus, uh, which will be, you know, whatsoever. Uh, like, for example, some of them will start you off with uh, money, which will start you off with a, uh, kind of like a rolling cascade of uh, banking bonuses throughout the entire game. Because you just get one, it launches you into the next one, launches you into the next one. It's a little hilarious like that, so, anyway. Thank you, Drifting Sticks, for throwing the dang cursor all over the place. Appreciate that one. And it's unfortunate because, again, this Drifting Stick issue, um, I, I have... Uh, so I've played a, a, you know, a few Vita-specific games. Usually I just do PSP stuff, but... Um, as far as Vita-specific things, like, I've done at least a number of them, and this just isn't an issue in most of them. There's usually enough sensitivity, uh, that, or at least the option to adjust the sensitivity, that you don't have this issue. Like even with the mod that will change the uh, uh, change the sensitivity to one percent, it will still have this issue. Um, I've turned off that mod for the time being because for some reason it's very drainy on the battery, but whatever. So. Either way, you can kind of get the sense of why the hell this thing is annoying to even play, let alone the fact that it's just not a fun experience anyway. Alright, so in terms of those weird numbers that I was discussing, so you can scale as the fights go. In, in premise, it's a cool system, because there's some ways that you could potentially scale stuff up in just downright bizarre ways. Like, um, for example, you... Well, not not even bizarre. Like, for example, you can have a basic warrior guy here that can actually take on fighters and stuff like that uh, towards the end of the game, that if you end up scaling them up and up, they can actually fight tanks. Um, like, you know, you give them all their veteran bonuses, you give them all their loyalty bonuses, you give them you know, some walls to hide behind, you give them a general, it, you can just basically keep stabbing them that stuff and eventually they'll become nigh unstoppable. And then randomly something with almost no attack, with a, you know, two-thirds of the way injured unit will come in and just instantly kill them. F somehow. 
It just bugs out and does that sometimes. If anyone's using elephants, they just randomly drift across the screen. It's it's a glorious mess, frankly. Uh, I would say I love it for it, but this uh, it, it's just not it's just not a very good game. Um, so anyway, go ahead and start building a boat. We'll go ahead and send these people over this way. And yeah, um, it's almost not uh, not even worth taking on the uh, barbarian camp up there. Because, uh, like I said, the AI doesn't know how to interact with it, so there's a very real chance that it's just a permanent, un uh, unbreakable northern border. Uh, sorry for the slight pause in the video. Uh, that was just OBS being dumb. We'll just have these guys guard then. Alright, that way. And this is what I was mentioning earlier about sometimes it'll just start taking turns for you. This is especially annoying if you have a plan in mind and then you have a bunch of units going to a specific place and the game just decides to go on auto mode for you. It can potentially screw you over real good. Now anyway, the way the population allocation works in this one, um, based on your population you can take that many tiles around your city. So for example, trade is both food and production. All the hammers are production, all your food is the little pears. Um, in this case, it's seemingly going for mostly... I'm, I'm not entirely sure why it would take some of these tiles as they are. Like, you can specifically tell it to maximize one particular thing, so balanced here will try to balance everything. Um, usually, you just want to leave it on money, because it tends to give you the most of everything. And, like, in that previous example there, I'm not sure why on earth it would take the forest, because trade is both two food and two production. Uh, but for whatever reason, it decided to take the only two production option. It's just kind of strange. Anyway, so, so yeah, the AI doesn't know what it's doing. Um, a lot of the mechanics just decide not to work sometimes. There's no music, for the most part, anyway. You, you get the occasional little jingle, but that's about it. It's a very sad and lonely game. <laughs> and in fact, it looks like, yeah, it looks like we're surrounded by barbarian camps here. So, if we wanted to make sure we got, we never got invaded, um, we can do that. So if I put this guy here, and just probably set them to defend, we can more or less make sure that nothing happens there. Um, if you might be thinking, you know, what about diplomacy, does that work at all? Okay, so there's the Egyptians, we actually have to invade them, because they're, uh, they're one of the few examples of the AI actually remembering what it's supposed to be doing in which the uh, the Egyptians will always rush for a science win. Um, which, you know, normally that would be one of those, hey, you know, you, you gotta, gotta know the mechanics kind of situations, but in this case, it's literally all they do. That is all they will ever do, for whatever reason. All right, and yeah, these guys are also blocked off on this end. And we got the French, okay. So basically, French, Romans, any of them, you never have to worry about them winning, because they'll always go for an elimination victory. Uh, which basically means that if you have something like this, you just have to put one city nearby where they are, and then you never have to worry again. Because the uh, the AI is so bad that it'll actually... Oh, there we go. Apparently we have developed money. Good to know. I'll just go ahead and uh, pop these guys over here, actually. one tile more to the to the right here. You're actually not supposed to be able to move them and build your city in one turn. However, due to the fact that you can reselect them while they're grayed out, you can actually just go ahead and break the game and do that. I mean, I was trying to do that there, but it decided to skip my turn, so that's nice. Uh, go Rustav, why not? Oh, right, forests give science. That's why that's there. Oh, well. Oh, well. Alright, maybe we'll set this back to balance then. Right. And yeah, so money works just like any of the other games. You basically have some money, you can throw it towards completing an objective, and then it does that. Um, monetary victories are probably the easiest to get in this one, because you can get to the point eventually where you're... Uh, Oh, I can actually rush those? Alright. 
you can get to the point eventually where you're just basically spending to do everything, but you're also getting near infinite money. Have them build some dudes just for defense, and I guess where do we want to even put this guy? Probably just gonna throw them over here. And yeah, if you build a boat early on, um, the AI will very rarely remember to build boats until later on in the game. So usually you can just go discover a bunch of uh, one-off bonuses sitting around on the map. Um, so for example, one of them will just give you a bunch of uh, upgrades. Sometimes the AI will randomly drift off the screen. That's fine. Oh yeah, and by the way, uh, with the AI, all they ever know how to do is to uh, demand things and ask for, uh... Key, Rain, Winham. Maybe I'll just call it Odessa. Um, all they know how to do is to demand stuff from you and to declare war. It's... it's not... it just doesn't know what else to do. It's functionally speaking the equivalent of playing with a toddler. Like, you've just taught them how the game works, and they just... they really don't know how to do anything other than attack stuff. But you're willing to let them have a try. There. Um, as far as why galleys would be useful for collecting stuff, they come with a uh, settler, or not a settler, but a scout on there. And come on, game. This, uh, this friggin' sensitivity thing with the sticks absolutely sucks. Sometimes it, it'll actually be nice enough that it'll let you, you know, just sit there for a minute and actually play the game for a second without it bugging out, but... Other times it'll just have you sending your units to the wrong place entirely, or like this, dr like drift the screen over and over. That's that's fine. That's exactly what I'm trying to do. Dang, oversensitive sticks. All right. And again, you might be saying, "Hey, isn't that because your Vita's broken?" And not exactly, because. A lot of Vitas have this issue, and this one in particular, I've seen a good number of reviews saying that, yeah, no, this this is just a really annoying issue, even if they're not noticeably broken any other time. Because I actually never even noticed that the sticks were an issue until this game. Um, because I had, like, when, so when I first got, got the thing, I, like, I knew it had a, uh, an issue to, to begin with, but then when, uh, when, like, when I just had it repaired, I just repair, replaced the stick with a new one. Oh, for God's sake, I'm gonna slap this game in a second. And, by the way, you might be thinking, why don't you use the D-pad? <laughs> you can't use the D-pad. We'll just use the touchscreen, I guess. Um, anyway. So, I replaced the stick with a new one. Um, I actually have a pile of, like, four replacement ones there. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you've just replaced it with a brand new one, it's still gonna have that issue because, uh, again, the sensitivity is apparently just set to max. It just does that. Anyway, so as far as uh, unit upgrades go, there we go. Let's make an oh. army. I don't even have my hands on the dang sticks right now. And you might be thinking, hey, that's more units, that's Bravo. more potential health. Bravo. No, it's still just one to three is their health. Right, so they've already managed to build a wonder. Uh, the AI just straight up cheats, by the way. Dabbing, don't flabbing. All right. Uh, we'll go for pottery. We'll just go for uh, culture all of a sudden. Bravo. All right, 50% culture? Sure, why not? Same with any other uh, Civ game. You just kind of get bonuses. You don't really get a countdown in this one. They just sort of show up. Yeah, for comparison, like I said, the... Uh, regular old DS version of uh, Civ Revolutions 1. It had all these same mechanics, it had more, the AI was functional. There still wasn't really music, per se, but... You know, it, it still did the job. In terms of just a quick Civ game you could play while sitting down on a break, it did the job. And, uh, yeah, if anybody ever tell if any AI ever tells you that they want a truce, never accept the truce. Reason being, they will just blindly bum-rush you forever. It's, uh, it's pretty great. Even if there's no reason for them to do so, you haven't agreed to a truce, so they will just keep trying to attack seemingly nowhere. Alright, so now, this is one of those ones that I was talking about earlier. Let's go in there. 
All right. So we got some knights. Fantastic. Would love to be able to select those. You know, if the game would stop freaking out for two seconds. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, this is really annoying. If you're wondering why it's drifting all over the place when I'm doing that, um, if you if you rotate them several times, uh, clockwise or counterclockwise, um, it tries to reset the sensitivity. Uh, it's just a built-in oh. function, because I'm assuming they probably knew. Anyway. Let's move that one over right there, then. We'll have the, uh, the militia here board their ship in a moment. It's kind of cool to... See, in, in premise, a lot of the stuff in this game is kind of cool. Like, you just basically drop them off, do a little drive-by exploring, move on to the next one. Uh, unlike other uh, games in the series, if you have, just your galleys can't go into deep water instead of immediately dying, if you don't know that. Go which I think was mostly just an older game issue. And yeah, culture is another one of those things that you can just break in half in this game. Let's see. Oh, hey, look! Another one of these dang spam bots. Please, spam bots, get bent. It's really annoying. It's, for some reason, it's take. It's currently banned already. Okay. Good to know. Apparently I banned them like eight times, so that's fine. Um, <laughs> how do I get out of this menu? I don't know. Apparently it decided I needed a whole breakdown of everything they've ever done. Right. Neat. Fantastic. Can't see chat anymore. Whatever. <laughs> there really isn't even much else to say about this thing. It's it's just not very good. Just kind of curious who else uh, might have played this one. So I should probably have the city building something else now. So early on, there really isn't too much for them to do. You can build roads around. You can build barracks. Might as well build some barracks, I suppose. Uh, when you start getting granaries and things, there's that option. The funny part is, though, if you just go down the money route, you never have to worry about granaries and things like that, because you just get them for free. Again, I don't know who decided on the monetary bonuses for this game, because, yeah, you basically just get anything you could ever need for free. Now, you get all your granaries uh, to build all your food up, you get a bunch of aqueducts, you get free banking. Dabbing, don't fobbing. Dabbing, don't fobbing. Let's do writing. So as far as what these different things do, by the way, um, there is a like a tech tree and whatever else you can use. Uh, it's one of the few things that's semi-functional. It's like, you know, you go to that and it tells you the full thing that you need to get there. So that's pretty cool. Uh, in this case, writing would give us the ability to expand borders more. Code of Laws would potentially give us uh, effectively double the tiles in each of the cities. Thanks to some shenanigans, which is nice. Like I was saying earlier, uh, the like the overall core mechanics are something that's something that I like in theory. It's just very badly implemented here. That's why I like the DS game. Alright, the drones. Uh, or actually, no wait, this is the Japanese. Um, or actually a library. Apparently we can rush that one. Actually, we don't want to rush it. Mm, da, 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 that one's fine. These guys can also build a library. And yeah, if you just switch over to a project, all of the uh, all of the everything goes to it. Um, another funny note, unlike other previous games, you don't actually... Building roads is kind of a bad thing. Like, sure, you can get units up to the front a little bit faster if you need to. Um, but for the most part, it's just not something you want to do, because it basically means if you get invaded, you slow them down by the fact that it takes them longer to actually walk there. Uh, you don't really get any noticeable economic benefit from doing it, because uh, uh, there's really no need to worry about economics in this one. Um, as in, all your trade units are terrible, so... Why bother? Alright. So we'll just leave that 
there. If we start... Yeah, if we start going this way and get Monarchy, it's going to give a pretty noticeable bonus. Oh, I forgot to pick up the... Let's go pick up the thing. Alright, please, please stop drifting for two seconds. Thank you. Stalling. Oof! Okay, we discovered currency. I think that one just gives you a random attack. Research of writing, sure. Might as well do that and get some kind of bonus out of it. Build a market to make money. Gotta research writing in 30 turns, that's fine. We have 10 turns to get there. That's fine. Like, I will say for the little mini achievement system, it does kind of feel nice that uh, with, uh, you know, whenever the AI is cheating, um, it kind of gives you a little little answer to that, because this is the highest difficulty. You may notice they have done absolutely nothing so far. <laughs> uh, let's see. Eh. Like, like I said, this is all they know how to do. They just demand things. In terms of trade, I think, I think Montezuma is the only one that actually tries to trade with anybody. Dabbing on flabbing. Key Rame Winham. Dabbing on Flabbing. There we go. Let's go. Right and bye, Cursor. Don't know where you're going, but see ya. So, what it's saying about defensive units, uh, there's basically any. pretty much any ranged or spear units. Uh, will be considered defensive, so archers, pikemen, um, riflemen, musketeers, that kind of thing later on down the line. Um, most of your basic infantry are considered defensive units, uh, which is kind of an interesting balance for this one. So like knights, tanks, that kind of thing are your offensive, so they've got uh, bad defense, high offense. Uh, your defensive ones will scale up very well defensively, but have almost nothing for offense. Um, your um, And then you have artillery that kind of gives you different attack stuff. Like, for example, if you get city walls, they can attack for free. That kind of stuff. Let's see. Um, literacy. Uh, you know what? Fine. Why not? Might have also noticed that there's no customization for what civilizations you're actually fighting or how many there are. Or uh, city states. Yeah. Dabbing on fobbing. Let's see, writing, gonna build spies. Dabbing on fobbing. See, oh, wait, first to, okay. Dabbing on fobbing. The first to discover writing. Yeah, if you're the first to discover something, you get a bonus. Um, so we'll just go monarchy, and then we'll go democracy. Uh, democracy is straight up broken. Like, after you get that one, you can just infinitely scale up forever. Bravo! Bravo! Alright, so at this point, it's getting to become more than clear that it's time to just start mashing out cash. So, okay, they've got a courthouse, they've got double their area. Mm. So we'll have everyone start focusing on money. Yeah, money and science, I think. Good. And yeah, because those were the coast, we still have not been invaded. They've got an army here. <laughs> they just don't know what to do. <laughs> uh. Bye, Cursor. And I have seen cases where even on the highest difficulty, it's possible to just get every victory condition at once. That's kind of dumb like that. Actually, funny thing is, 
even if the AI discovers nukes, they will gladly sell you the uh, discovery of nukes. But only one nuke can ever be built in the game, and they won't do it. <laughs> oh my goodness. The cursor thing is the pits. Bravo! 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 Then we'll save democracy for a minute because that is a free change. Um, we'll do ceremonial burial so we can start building uh, temples and things. And then after that, we we'll just start getting free cities. Cost of new buildings by 50%? Yeah, that's not broken at all. Okay. What's this one do again? It's not telling me. It says it's square for details. Yeah, plus two food from planes. Not really worth it. Let's build Keep a market. Rain, win em. This money starts up. going up pretty well. Once we get to 500, we get another bonus. Once we get to 1,000, we get another bonus. Basically, once you get to 10,000 money, um, you just Dab win the game at that point. Me. You just build a world bank and you've won. Key so we'll get there. Win em. There we go. <laughs> we got banking, so now money and things going to go up. You may notice we still are getting invaded from four different places who still have not managed to accomplish a single thing. That's fine. I'm actually a little bit unsure what this city is doing right now. What, what the hell is Moscow up to? They're just not building anything? Oh, they can build that thing, sure. Okay, trading post. Uh, sometimes production Bravo. just kind of bugs out. Like if you try to build a wonder oh, or whatever else ball. and you try to transfer that to another building, Sometimes it'll just tell you that nothing costs anything ever anymore. Bravo. Right, so Bravo. after this point, yeah, now we're getting 25 a turn. Okay, we get catapults now. Now oh, we're starting to get religion coming in. It doesn't seem like we're going to get uh, much out of culture. And the cursor's drifting again. This thing is just, yeah. It's suboptimal. <laughs> uh, so the reason we're going for democracy now uh, is because of infinite money and science. Bravo. The general idea is you can't Bravo. declare a lot people at that point, but you get so much money and science that it doesn't matter. Ah. <laughs> like, literally, the only reason you wouldn't want to take it is to keep them in infinite wars. Please, come on now. Stop doing that. I'm just trying to use the, uh, the touch screen at this point. Alright. Do you get a courthouse? I think you get a courthouse. It's worth some money to build that courthouse, but it's fine. Uh, Oh, and uh, as if the other stuff wasn't weird enough already, um, there's another weird thing that can happen. Oh, where um, sometimes... Oh. Yeah, why don't you just make all signs 50% forever? Uh, there's some cases where, yeah, if you um, if you put a wall on a city, sometimes the wall will just decide that that city loses forever now. Um, I've only seen it happen a couple times, but it's just a weird, a weird thing. And there we go. 50% bonus to science and gold. So at that point, we're going to start stacking stuff pretty dang well. 
Uh, irrigation we're going to get for free pretty soon here. Might as well just go religion or whatever, oh, I guess. Gosh. Let's go all in for banks here. I uh, couldn't really tell you why uh, why this one decided that it just never wants to build anything anymore. It refuses to even display build costs anymore. Why not? And now money in comes up to 70 per turn. Uh, Alright, so half of us riflemen. Dabbing go flabbing. Okay, <clears throat> Alright, so we need engineering, which will give us guns, which will give us rifles, which will give us infinite units. Uh, we no longer need to upgrade our infantry ever. Wobbly sub. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> now we don't really need that. Golden. Oof! Key Rain Winnem. Yeah, this is a game, apparently. Dabbing on flabbing. Dabbing on flabbing. Alright, next we can adventure. Rain like a great person appears. We'll see if it's in the room. Oh, I so this oh. money. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Just in camera British. Sure. Wow. Oh, Oof. Do is skip four turns and get it instead of getting 50% bonus. And we still have not gotten invaded by anybody. Oof. Dabbing don't flabbing. So what next? Feudalism? Do we need feudalism? I don't even know. Bravo. Sometimes you'll just be in like the dang Middle Ages, and then the uh, the Egyptians show up, and it's like, oh, they've launched, uh, they've already started launching pieces of their space satellite. Bravo. They're, uh, they're ready to go colonize some other planet. Meanwhile, you're still discovering how grain works. But most of the time, it's like this. Over there going for a cultural victory, which can't actually happen. Because as you may notice, culture can't go beyond these barbarian camps, and they don't know what to do about them. Additionally, um, from what I can tell, the AI is just scared of barbarian camps. Or scared of barbarians in general, despite them having literally zero attack power. Um, because they never seem to want to attack your units nearby them. Seemingly because somebody told them, oh, you know, they're going to get finished off by the bar barbarians. They don't want to go there, and then they just never do. So that's fun. It costs 480, but that's going to pay back for itself pretty quick. Uh, Moscow here, I don't really know why it can't ever seem to do anything right. But whatever. I'll give it an aqueduct. And then have it start building a cathedral, I suppose, to start working on some culture to build their stuff a little bit better. Bravo! Bravo! Blobbity blobbity blah. Yeah, now we're getting a turn. Now we're gonna be six, and that's just gonna keep scaling up until eventually we just well after a certain point it just won't matter anymore. Kind of keep snowballing this crap and well, until you get ten thousand. Dabbing don't flabbing. Dabbing don't flabbing. Alright, we'll do steam power, I suppose. Oh, oh. Oh. And they're still threatening nothing. Oh. 
Yeah, it's funny how they tell you, oh, they're producing whatever number of bolts you can turn. It doesn't matter. It literally doesn't matter. Because that number is not something you can really compare with anything. Dabbing go flopping. Dabbing go flopping. Okay, no. Oh, wait. Hang on. Now we want to build... Where's the thing? Yeah, we want to do industrialization. That's the point at which everything starts snowballing straight off a cliff. Key, Rain Winnem. Okay, now we get plus one population over there. Uh, if you combine this with culture, um, you can you can kind of wind up with a with a funny thing where the cultural guys keep showing up and occasionally give you plus one population in each city, and then like let's say you build a um, uh, like you build a Statue of Liberty, which gives you plus two in each city, and then you get these guys, which will. Well, you, you do banking, which also gives you plus one. Like, you can just get crazy population really quick. That's more or less what we're going for here. And you might be thinking, hey, what if somebody invades the city? Won't they get all these bonuses? And no. For some reason, some genius that was balancing this decided that if your city gets invaded, all of its stuff is just gone. It doesn't matter what it had to begin with, unless it's a cultural victory. Like, unless they like, culturally take over. Um, seizing the city, even if it was, if there was never a fight and they just took it completely undefended, all of it just gets wiped off the map. Regardless of how built up it was. Dabbing go flopping. Dabbing go flopping. Now we get corporations. You might be noticing again we still have not actually fought anything. Just build the Statue of Liberty. Why not? They are still scared of walking past the barbarian camps. Oh, well, okay. They already did the thing. It's fine. In that case, why don't you go ahead and build a factory? Switch over to gold income, which is now almost 300 a turn. They're building the United Nations over there. That's fine. Usually they tend to pick the most obscure locations to be able to do that. Alright. Let's do factory here as well. I need to get to 10,000 money very quick. I'll just build a caravan just to show you what I mean about them being terrible. Bravo! Yeah, everybody's building the United Nations now. We just get entire Bravo. buildings every round now. And this is just three cities, too. I think my favorite one was, like, in that case, yeah, it's literally just probably a city with a population of one or something in the middle of just an island here. Like, can we see its info? Is it even going to let us look? No. No, it won't. But they usually just pick some out-of-nowhere hammer that has nothing better to do to build their game-ending super loader. City. We're already almost up to 400. They're building the United Nations in two separate places for whatever reason. Alright, so we take this guy. Probably, let's see, what what city can we bring him to? 
I don't think we're currently at war with the Egyptians, so we can go ahead and try to bring him over there. And he has that little country music ditty that will have every single tile that it moves. So I'd figure we probably have, I don't know, like 50 before they actually get their victory condition. There's no way to because they pick the most random places to build this crap. Uh, We're actually not going to build any more caravans because you can see why that's annoying as hell. Okay. Let's go ahead and build the city Bravo. house for some reason. They, uh, they did the Manhattan Project. They will never use that nuke. Freaking annoying. Uh, Bravo. What did that give us? We get three times that per round, just so here. Bravo. Keep Rain Winham. Alright, so we got yet another economic boom everywhere. Dandy. Bravo! Yes, they're still building their thing. It still doesn't really matter. Who are we kidding? Bravo. There's a reason I call this the worst civilization game. It's it's almost impressively bad. Bravo! I mean, given everything, there's a very Keep real possibility that we actually will get all the way up to 10,000 and be able to build a World Bank without, before these guys ever finish building the UN. There we go. They finally started remembering to build it in the capital. Go figure. They finally remember. But you can see. You can see what I mean. This thing is... It's bad. <laughs> it's just, it's impressively bad. Also, apparently, hang on, the video, it decided to completely cut out. It didn't even want to look at it. Yes, no? Yeah, it barely even wants to look at it. Um, but yeah, this is basically how it goes. You either get in, well, as far as invasions go, there's so many things that just cause the AI to have no clue what's going on. And it's kind of impressive considering, you know, even like Civ 2 back on the PS1 there had comparatively pretty complex AI, like to the point where they would remember, you know, their relationships with people and whatever else. Like I was playing a, a game of Civ 2 on that one where I I literally had this, uh, this war going on with the Carthaginians and they remembered certain broken treaties and whatever else. And then occasionally they're like, okay, look, we have this way bigger problem over here, so hey, how about we have a little bit of a ceasefire, go deal with that first, and like, the AI can actually plan and do stuff. Meanwhile, on this one, it doesn't know anything other than, you know, raw me hit with stick or me what in technology, and it's like, you have 50 billion tanks, but you can't get past the barbarian encampment that's like three feet away from your home base. <laughs> it's kind of amazing. Anyway, um...